Deep in the heart of the Grand, the Six Nations of the Grand River, we are inside the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena. This is Six Nations Lacrosse on Rogers TV. It is game three of the first round series between the Six Nations Chiefs and the Coburg Cougars. Mark Perry alongside Daryl Smart. And what a series it has been, of course, for both of these teams. I mean, they have been going back and forth, back and forth. You know, game one went right down to the final 30 seconds Seconds with Austin Stotts capping off that six goal. Insane. It was night. an insane I, game. I still can't believe that one. I'm still <laughs> recovering my voice from that game. Game two, another close one. It was a final eight to seven for Six Nations. So, I mean, two close games, two one goal games, but it is the Coburg Cougars that are on their heels here because they are looking to stave off a, a series strength hold here with Six Nations up two games to none in this, in this best of seven. You're absolutely right, Mark. Uh, you know what, the Cobra Kodiaks, you have to hand it to them. They have been battling very, very hard here in this series. And again, it's a, it's a two nothing series lead for the Chiefs. Obviously doesn't read what this series has been because for most of this series, the Cobra Kodiaks have had the lead. Obviously, they did. They had the lead the entire time in that game one, up until 25 seconds remaining in regulation with, when Austin Stott scored that sixth goal of the night. And then on Friday night in Baltimore at the Recreation Center, first MSL game in Baltimore, uh, the new home, I guess, for the playoffs for the Cobra Kodiaks. Uh, again, it was an 8-7 win for the Chiefs but not an easy one. Uh, by far, they played their best period of the season in that first period. Uh, I was talking to Tim Bomberry uh, earlier on today, and the, he was very happy with the way the Chiefs played. They played the most complete period that they had played all season long, and they played great defense, and they got out to that 6-1 lead and really cruised and that was all Dalton Solver and we talked about it all season long uh, it's been offense by committee here the, the goal scoring has been spread out for the Six Nations Chiefs and it was uh, Dalton Solver's uh, time to shine on Friday night he got the three goals one assist I believe it was and then of course <laughs> the incomparable Cody Jamison again he got one goal but he had three assists and was absolutely lights out uh, facilitating the ball for the Six Nations Chiefs Chiefs, uh, Warren Hill got the win in that one. Uh, these two teams, we're going to have a great goaltending matchup again. We're going to have Kevin Orleman in net for the Kodiaks, and we've got Dougie Jamison. He's going to be in net for the Chiefs. These two guys have been going at it all series long, all season long, and we're in for a nail biter again. Of course, for the Cobra Kodiaks, Alex Simmons, three goals, eight assists, 11 points in those first uh, two games. But on the Six Nations side, I mean, Brendan Bomberry wasn't exactly spectacular. He was relatively invisible in game one, but came out in game two with a goal and a pair of helpers in that game to really help you know, Six Nations get propelled to that victory. They didn't uh, surrender the lead. They had the lead the entire time. And again, you know, for Six Nations, you know, two games away from the uh, finals here in Major Series Lacrosse. On the other side, of yep. course, it is Peterborough up two games to one on as of Brooklyn. Yes, as, as of, of now. right now, of course, there was a bit of a hoo-ha there with the uh, with game two. Uh, but again, that game four is tonight as well. So stay Double tuned. Dip. We'll keep we'll keep you updated as the game goes along here on what's happening over there. So Rogers double dip tonight. We've got uh, Rogers TV Durham out in Whitby, and then uh, of course us right here live here on Six Nations. It's going to be an amazing game tonight. And we are good for the game here because Game Three is just about to get underway. Tyson Bomberry and Ryan Hay take the draw there, and Tyson Bomberry takes it immediately and shoots it, and it goes wide. Game Game Three. Here in Six Nations, and a big hit down. Tyson Bomberry hammers his man down, and Bell gets it up to Joey Cupido. Cupido feeds Jamison. Jamison shoots and just misses glove side. Eric Fennell leaves it for Jamison. Jamison. Looking for a lane, takes a shot, and that one's going to be blocked down low. Kevin Orleman in the goal 
for the Coburg Kodiaks. Of course, it was Steve Orleman in net for games one and two. And there's a shot on goal, stopped by Jamison, and a stretch pass here for Jamison on a breakaway. Jamison shoots, scores! Cody Jamison goes up top, stick side on the breakaway, and it's 1-0 Six Nations. You give a guy like Cody Jamison that much room and that much space, and he's just going to bury you. And on this one, great pass, stretch pass, and Cody Jamison making no mistake. Like you would expect out of a veteran. One of, the, one of the more clutch players in this game, and we're up one nothing here. And I want to point out Tyson Bell. Of course, you can see that great mane on the screen there, <laughs> Tyson Bell. Just the stretch pass that uh, he delivered there on that first goal. He was the one that delivered the stretch pass to Austin Stotts for the game one winner. More known for his physicality, uh, Daryl, he's really shown that he can be that stretch pass facilitator at the same time, too. Absolutely right, Mark. Dyson Bell's one of those guys, he has so many dimensions to him. And like you said, he's got that he's got that edge to him where he loves it. That's, a, that's why he came back to play boxing for, for us this summer, opposed to playing in the PLL. He was playing down south in the PLL for a while. He wanted to play boxing, wanted to win a man cup for the Six Nations Chiefs. But he, ha he brings so much to the game. And one of those things, like you said, is that stretch pass, the transition. Even, uh, even on offense, he was playing offense in game two here on Six Nations. Ike Squire Hill, number 32, will leave it there for Jordan Durston, number 78. And here's Austin Stotts. Stotts turns around. He's got seven in the first two games. And he one hands it wide. In close, Durston shoots and stopped by Orleman. He'll scoop it up. In that conversation I had with Tim Bomberry before the uh, the game, he was saying, hey, for some reason, Orleman really, really seems to step up when it comes to the Chiefs, and it's just a matter of time. They're just pecking away, and it's a matter of time before they have one of those breakout offensive performances from the Chiefs. It was a 4-1 lead after game two, period one. Kevin Owen Hill shoots it wide. Uh, Six Nations really came out to play in game two. Getting that early lead, not surrendering it, taking that lesson from game one that, you know what, we want that lead and we want to keep it. We don't want to let any, any kind of momentum to go the Kodiak's way as the whistle goes. You're 100% right on that. And I'm going to say you're 100% right on a lot of things you're saying tonight. But it, that's just the familiarity we are with these two, uh, these two teams. We've seen them so many times this season. And the one thing that they, they want to get off to that quick start, they don't want to fall behind and come from behind as Cody Jamison is going to the, uh, oh, must be a bench minor here. Yeah, it's going to be Mason Hill that's going to go to the box. So a power play here one of for two the APs, One of two APs in the Chiefs lineup. I know uh, talking to John Webb, the GM and one of the coaches of the Kodiaks, they're a little bit banged up. They've got a couple of APs in the lineup as well. Just one of those things about uh, playoff lacrosse. You're going to play this many games uh, in this span of time. You're going to have to use some bodies. Coburg 3 for 11 on the man advantage in the first two games. Six Nations does have a couple of shorthanded markers to their credit. And here's Ty Logan turning around. 12 seconds on the shot clock. He gets bodied along the boards on the near side, finds Durston. Wholesale change and Silver in alone here. Trying to move the ball around as the horn goes for the shot clock violation. And Silver just there, just trying to kill off time while his mates get set up on the other side. It looks like the Cobra Kodiak's defense is hunkered down now. They had a couple lapses there in transition, but in the, uh, in the offensive sets for Six Nations, they've really done a great job of closing off those lanes. Good job by Billy D. Smith, who's back in the lineup here tonight, knocking that away from Simmons, but right in on goal as Aaron Woods picked it up and shot it toward Jamison, and Jamison makes the save. And here comes Austin Stotts again. Stotts has a bit of room, but he's getting bodied there by Haig. Stotts with 15 on the shot clock. 
He's still holding on to it. Stotts finds some room, shoots. That one goes wide and he takes a tumble at the same time. And he is gonna draw the penalty. And the official blows the whistle again. There might be two, there might be a second penalty called here. Looks like it, Mark. It's Nick Eller Ellerton, or Ellerton, sorry, number 11 going to the box. Looks like he just got teed up there, so he's got the slash and the and the tee. And that was all a part of Austin Stotts moving his legs. It, it was a great one-on-one -on -one matchup, and he wasn't biting on the stutter step of Austin Stotts, and finally Stotts came in, blew by Ellerton, and then Ellerton had to uh, do something to uh, stop Stotts. So five seconds left in the penalty to Six Nations. They're gonna go to a power play here for three minutes and 45 seconds. A double minor. Tyson, or rather Bomberry, over for Stotts, and he shoots that one on goal and a shoulder save by Orleman. Again, Kevin Orleman in the net for Coburg here tonight. Steve Orleman backing him up. And here's Rowan Kelly, who's just moving the ball around, 15 on the shot clock. Around a gaggle of Chiefs, and it's gonna be picked up here by Bell. That's a different defensive look by the Chiefs right there. They weren't, uh, weren't letting up at the center of the floor. They were not letting the Kodiaks come into the offensive zone. That's just another look. Brendan Bomberry over for Fennell. Fennell shoots and scores! Eric Fennell with his second of the playoffs and Six Nations takes a 2-0 lead, a power play goal. Fennell had all sorts of room there and he had all sorts of space. Kevin Orleman had that gap on his left side there as we see the uh, replay on that one. He had a little gap just on the on that glove side. And a guy like Eric Fennell, you give that much space, he's gonna pinpoint accuracy on the right side, sorry. He didn't have much room there, Daryl, but he made it count. He found, he found the little spot there. Just found the gap. That's an incredible shot by Fennell. Incredible camera work being done there by our crew here at Rogers TV to get that shot. And now Six Nations pressing again. Remember, they're still on the man advantage. Shot by Stott, stopped by Orleman. A minute 38 left. In the penalty with that goal, of course, killed off the first of those two penalties. And here's Kalen Pilo. Pilo getting held up. A penalty is going to be called here. Shot on goal, and that one actually just missed. Ball's bouncing around. It's going to be scooped up. And the Chiefs will go to the box, and it looks like it is going to be Mason Kaminga. Mason Kaminga going to the box. I think that might be a hold there. I think it might have been a slash. A slash? According to what I saw from the official. Oh, there it is, the hold. Ah, oh, it is a hold. there we go. <laughs> See, I'm not always 100% right. <laughs> the trifocals are working tonight. <laughs> but the, that that all started because Bielan, he, he, you know what? You see on the replay here, Bielan did a great job. He, uh, watch his feet. His feet are just moving. You know what? Kaminga with that extra shot. That's something Tim Bomberry, again, during this conversation I had with him before the game, we have to stop that second shot. He was saying, uh, you know what the referees are going to give you. And uh, that goes back to game number two where the, the Chiefs were in all sorts of penalty trouble. You knew, uh, you knew how the referees were going to call the game, so you had to adapt to it. And that's just a perfect example of that. Jordan Durston picks it up here. Four on four for the next 45 seconds. Dancing in is Vaughn Harris and a stop and a rebound is going to be picked up here by Bomberry and he gets it back to Durston for Fennell on the near side. Fennell twisting and turning and he just missed Vaughn Harris at the top of the key and that is going to roll all the way down for Chris Weir. Weir. Holding on to it, finds the captain, Cam Milligan. And now the Kodiaks moving the ball around. They're gonna go to the power play in about five seconds, 10 seconds on the shot clock. And here's Pilon. 
Nilo with a shot he just missed. And unable to uncork the ball there was Simmons. Looks like he was trying to get a handle of it, but he was having a bit of trouble there on the near side. Absolutely right. Austin Stotts passes it up. And here's Cody Jamison. Just 12 and change on, on the clock here in the first period. 15 seconds left in the penalty. Stotts with a shot and that one goes down low. Stopped by Kevin Orleman. So many different looks from Austin Stotts. That one, he just did the fake pump. And nice save by Kevin Orleman. Back to five aside. And Simmons has it here. Alex Simmons up top for Pilo. Oh, inside shot. What a save by Dougie Jamison. Riley Curtis all alone. What and a now save. A stretch pass here. Joey Capito shot stopped by Orlovin. Back and forth we go. Couple of chances, both ends. And both goaltenders saying, oh, no, no. You're going to have to do more than that. Riley Curtis got all alone. He broke right in on, on the cut. Woods with a shot stopped by Jamison, and it's going to be Kodiak's ball. Picked up here by Milligan in the back end. French getting bodied there by Logan, pushing him out of the key. And here's Pilo. Pilo on Cork's one, and it goes right into Logan. Bell and Squire Hill with a couple of shots. Backhand pass. There's a shot. Scores. Aaron Woods found some room and he puts it in and the Kodiaks are on the board. Aaron Woods has had himself a really good playoff so far in this series and Aaron Woods just like uh, Riley Curtis a couple of minutes ago in that last series he just got open in the in the inside. Uh, the Chiefs defense playing very aggressive on the outside but Woods sneaks inside there it is there's the step and Woods is all alone he this is one of those guys that he, you give him that much space. And I know it's a cliche to say, but you give a guy that much space, he's good to score. And that's a nice goal by Aaron Woods. His third of the playoffs, his fifth point. That's just uh, that's just a blown assignment by the Chiefs, uh, being a little bit over aggressive on the outside. I was just going to say before the goal that uh, the Chiefs defense looked very hungry. Starving out there, they're laying the body a lot and look like they're uh, smelling the blood here. The Chiefs looking to respond, they still hold the lead. And let's see what they can do here with this possession. Fennell, 12 on the shot clock. Fennell to the top, and that one's going to be shot wide. Grabbed up here by Durston, five on the shot clock. Up top, turning around, backhand shot, and that one's going to bounce into the crease, but doesn't hit Paydirt. And now the Kodiaks move up the other way. Quickly they hustle. Chris Atwood, number six, up top, shot down low, and that one's going to go wide. That was Gareth Hay, number 16, on that opportunity. Shot blocked. Six on the shot clock, and that one's going to be picked up. Running down, chugging down is Jerry Stotts. Jerry Stotts shot, and that one's going to be stopped by Orleman, and he keeps it inside, and a couple of shoves there after the save was made. <laughs> it looks like that is Chris Weir getting into the business. Adele, it's game three of the playoffs between these two teams. They're getting nasty. The Kodiaks. Simmons up top. Shot stopped by Jamison. Passed up for Cupido. Cupido. Couple of guys there. Cupido holds on to it. Looks like Tyson Bell is going to be going to the box. And yes, he indeed will. Him and again, getting it's tied up there in the back end. Over well, and here. again, we were talking about that earlier, about the, uh, the, the extra shot. Tyson Bell, the guy likes boxing across. That's why he's playing it right now, opposed to playing the field game. He likes to, that physicality. And unfortunately, he just went overzealous on that one. He took the extra shot. Simmons with a beautiful Superman attempt. Nice save by Dougie Jamison. And, and it was almost as if Tyson Bell was trying to be a broom and trying to sweep him out of the crease area. 
The one thing we talked about, Daryl, in game one was the penalty trouble the Chiefs got into. Yep. They cannot afford to do that here in game three when they have all the momentum in this series. Exactly. Milligan up top for Pilo. Pilo over, 13 on the shot clock. Up top for Simmons. Simmons shoots, stopped by Jamison. And a stretch pass here for Capito. He gets oh, it, oh. what a pass. Here comes Capito, scores! Oh boy, oh boy, what oh boy. A pass by Dougie Jamison. Joey Capito goes airborne after he takes that shot. And now the Chiefs take a 3-1 lead. As much as I like the uh, the stretch pass from Dougie Jamison, the goal by Capito, wait for the, the extra mustard and the hot sauce on the goal call by Roger Nurse, the referee. This was awesome, but that stretch pass, that was a beaut from Dougie Jamison, stretched it all the way out, and Capito burning his former mates again, and Capito in a great foot race. He, you know what, as nice as a goal that is when someone's, when you hear the footprints be, or the footsteps behind you, the way that he had to ca catch that over his shoulder, that was a beaut. That is that championship pedigree from Joey Cupido, member of the Colorado Mammoth, the defending now NLL champions. He's looking for his second ring of 2022. That's going to help him along the way. Aaron set. Yeah, Austin Stotts rather takes that shot. Goes wide and the shot from a sharp angle at the end of the shot clock. And they're really keying in on Brendan Bomberry right now. He's got two guys draped on him at all times in that offensive zone. One thing, to, one thing that the Cobra Kodiaks have really done well this series is close those gaps and play a really good defensive game. They know exactly what Brendan Bomberry brings to the table. Pilo over for Simmons. Backhand pass scooped up here by Jamison. Now Brendan Bomberry, top five in assists this past season. And here's Tyson Bomberry picking it up. Finds Fennell. But you take one out of the picture by stout defense. That's when your other mates have to step up. If you're the Chiefs. Rip toward the goal. That one's going to go wide and bounce all the way back in the Chiefs territory. One thing that Cody and another thing that Cody accident just not one thing but another thing defensively I just noticed that on the on that offensive set by the Chiefs Owen down he, he had Fennell and he was just going one on one he was isolating he didn't even have the ball he wasn't giving him a chance to go and they were trying to get the ball to him and couldn't. There's a shot by Pilo and he puts it down low and in right at the tail end of the power play. So a power play goal here for the Kodiaks, and it's a 3-2 game. Colbert Kodiaks always have an answer. They, they have this entire series, and this is a great passing play. And there's a beautiful shot, and that one beat Dougie Jamison. How many times have we said that about, about Kalen Pilo? He's been fantastic as well in this series so far. Yeah, Halifax prospect, plays for Queen's University, the Gales in the OUA. John Webb, the GM, a great, uh, great seeker of talent. And he has a gem in the form of Bielan. Up top here for Ben French, number 22. He's going to hold on to it. Finds his mate. This is Brian Rice. Rice dancing in, shot, and he just missed the bottom corner as he runs right into his teammate who was trying to play a bit of a screen and a power play is going to be coming here to the Chiefs. Jamison goes to the bench. The hand is up. 6.35 left here in this first period. It's a 3-2 game. Stotts up for Jamison. Jamison finds Bomberry to Stotts. Over. Shot. Orleman with the save. It's Vaughn Harris, number 28. Gets an extra shove in there. Bomberry over. Inside, and that one's going to go wide and trickle down. Still a delayed call on the floor. Shot by Finnell. Stop. That's a nice save by Orleman. What a transition here by the Chiefs. Holding up the Kodiaks in their own end with the delayed call, and now they're going to get a power play with C Curtis Conley going to the box. Curtis Conley going to the box. One thing I'm noticing about all of these players, and 
is the heat outside. I know it's a... It, it was, it's it was 32 degrees when I came in here. It's been stifling here the last couple of days, but we're, we're fortunate to have the air conditioning here at the ILA, but still that humidity plays a factor. Hey, you're out in that humidity all day long. You come in here, that's going to pay, play a factor in this one. You can see some of the players sticks over the heads already. First period. Kelly, a backhand pass all the way up top. But the Chiefs regain possession. Shot by Stotts, blocked in front. And he gets a hack for his troubles by Chris <laughs> Romanich. Right after he took that shot, he said, that one hurt, son. <laughs> Romanchuk not happy with that. Oh. Shot by Jamison, and he says that went in. That one looked like it went in, but the official says, no, it did not. And he's right on top of the action there. Austin Stotts giving the officials an earful, and he missed the ball. Jamison with a shot, stopped by Orleman. And the ball is going to roll down. Picked up here, though. And the Chiefs still with possession. Fresh shot clock here. Fennell inside for Stotts. And Stotts oh, trying to there's find a the shortstop. Uh, short side and Stotts oh, getting cross-checked down to the floor by Romanich. And Romanich is going to get a call. Holy moly. That was a hard shot <laughs> that was by hard Chris shot. Romanich. And Stotts Romanchuk, is going to get up here. Romanchuk's going to go to the bench, but Stotts, is, he had the initial penalty. He's going to go for a slash, I believe, there. There was a series behind the play. You could, you could call a few things on that last play. My goodness, Romanich that, that and Austin Stotts just back and forth, and Romanich just being absolutely physical. That all started with that no-goal call, and here it is. There's the opportunity by Stotts. Not happy still, that that was frustration boiling then, over from the, the no goal on the Cody Jamison shot that uh, Austin Stotts was right there. He, it, it appeared to him that it, that was a goal and the, that frustration kind of boiled over it into that, that set. And you can look on the screen right there, that is indeed Austin Stotts in the box. Stotts is gonna, he had the initial Romanchuk. Yeah, there's three in the box for Coburg. We've got ourselves a hotel in the penalty box already. It is a penalty box party here at the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena. No swimming pool needed. No swimming pool needed <laughs> indeed. So on the on the clock right now, we can tell you there's four minutes on the clock for Six Nations. That's Austin Stotts, the lone man in the box. 58 seconds left in the penalty. That was the initial penalty to Curtis Conley. And now there's an additional two minutes on the clock for six, uh, for, uh, for Coburg rather. And you can see Jameson and Milligan having discussions here with the officials, just trying to sort everything out here. And I know you can see Austin Stotts kind of pleading his case to the to the coaching staff and to, to his bench there. And it's one of those things that uh, if you don't get the call, you don't get the call and you just got to play on. And, and sometimes uh, just with the intensity of the game and Austin Stotts kind of a, a little bit of a, a, a mental lapse there uh, when it comes to just that focus. And, and he didn't want to let go of that, uh, the and, fact that they're- and Very under, un uncharacteristic of them yeah, too. Exactly, exactly. And, and that's gonna happen. And of course, it's game three of the series. They want to get that stranglehold, like you're saying. They want to get that big lead. But... So after all of that, Ike Squire Hill is now in the box with Austin Stotts. There's that two minute uh, clock up for Six Nations, 58 seconds. They've actually removed the two minute off of the clock for uh, Coburg. There's only a 58 second clock up there. Might have for some the visitors. misconducts here, maybe. Yeah, I, I that's just a guessing think, game. I'm yeah. just a guesser here. Just a guesser, not an official. That's for certain. So Austin Stotts got two minutes for a cross check, an unsportsmanlike conduct as well. So four minutes plus an additional 10. So I'm not too sure about that one with Austin Stotts getting the extras there after absolutely just getting drilled in front of the net. Romanich only got two minutes after all of that. So 420 on the clock. Four on four for the next 12 seconds or so. Here's Durston with a shot. It's gonna be blocked before it reaches the net. 
and a turnaround shot. Oh, Sam LeClaire was looking for a bit of pay dirt on the wraparound, but unable to hit it. So a minute in the in the power play here for Coburg. And the Kodiaks here looking to respond. They're down by one. Simmons playing pitch and catch there. Nine on the shot clock. Simmons up top. Finds Pilo up top, and that one's going to be stopped. And now the Chiefs get the ball back here. The Chiefs, and losing his stick in the process there was Kaminga, but that ball went up to Logan. Yard sale. Cody Jamison. I mean, I'm sure a game war, a game uh, used stick would go for a little bit here. I think so. Chiefs looking to respond. Ten seconds left in the penalty. Four seconds on the shot clock. And shot, and that one is not going to count as it did go in, but the official right there. Nice call by Roger Nurse, foot in the crease. So three minutes left in the period. Five aside, we are back here. And here's Simmons. Simmons up top, shot down low, and it just trickles in on Jamison. Stretch pass here for X Squire Hill. He'll pick it up here on the corner. And he just gets shoved into the boards. No call on that one. The physicality really picking up in this game if it hasn't already. Owen down with a big hit, and that's one of the reasons why the Six Nations Chiefs drafted him. And shot on goal, stopped by Jamison. And here comes Bell. Bell finds his man, who leaves it back. That was Sam LeClaire, number 92, as he goes toward the goal. Here's Cody Jamison through a screen, and that one shot wide. And Jamison without a helmet, Durston holding on to it. Jamison just trying to get his helmet back on. There we and go. Have Pack there in the corner as Vaughn Harris had his stick chopped out of his hands. Under two minutes to go here in the second. Penalty filled first period, that's for certain. You can say that again. <laughs> and I can tell you, just looking around the arena here. Great crowd today. Oh, beautiful crowd. We're going to have a couple members of the crowd on our broadcast at some point here tonight. Yep, during the second intermission uh, behind the Chiefs, uh, Chiefs net, high above the, uh, if you get a camera out there, the the uh, the contingent we're all wearing orange, the Haudenosaunee National under 21 team this year. Taking in the game, they were, I was smelling the food from here. <laughs> Always talking about food, but they, were, uh, they had their dinner after training today. Up top for Jameson and he gets bodied away from the ball and the net. And now Owen down with 90 seconds to go in the first. We'll have a special presentation after the break in the first intermission as well. So definitely stay tuned. We got uh, we got a packed, packed lineup. I know, it's here, nice. Here we, it's nice. Today. We're, we're going to be presenting the MSL Awards uh, in partnership with our, our friends at uh, Rogers TV Durham. They're going to be doing the same thing during the uh, first intermission of their game, uh, Brooklyn and Peterborough. Uh, we're going to uh, announce the 2021 MSL Awards. Here's Eric Fennell. Would it be 2022? 2022? Did I say 2021? You, you did. Did you, I? I think so. Yeah, hey, I'm did. on holidays, man. <laughs> I'm on holidays. I just came in from the cabin. Oh, going, good. Going back after the game. Here's Brendan Bomberry, and that one's blocked in front. 38 seconds left and a two on one here. There's a shot on goal and it rolls right toward the goal and Jamison with the save stretched up here for Eric Fennell, one on one. Fennell using his body. Fennell oh scores. boy, oh boy. Are you kidding me? Eric Fennell goes one on one and absolutely undresses the defender and he gives Six Nations a 4-2 lead. That was just heads up all around. 
I, I have no idea. I forget who made that stretch pass. Was that Tyson Bell that made the stretch pass again? Um, I have to no, I, I'm no? actually not too sure. It might have been too Dougie Jameson again. It might have been, but uh, he saw Fennell. Fennell was all alone We're gonna here. We're going to see it here. Right behind oh, the goal. Oh. I don't know exactly who that was. But, and again, Eric Fennell was going to hold back up. He came With back. With the transition. I know. Left to right. He absolutely just beat Kevin Orleman and Nick Ellerton at the same time. Well, and, and give props to Eric Fennell. He, he saw the matchup that he had. It looked like he was going to just pull back and wait for the offensive set to come. He recognized the uh, matchup with Ellerton and pulled his way in, created space with the contact, and then made that beautiful move <laughs> to beat Orleman. That's a highlight. Making glove out of nothing at all. 21 seconds left in the period, and Tyson Bomberry having a discussion. That was Cody Jamison with the pass. It was Cody Jamison. And again, showing versatility. Uh, the guys down in the, the offensive players in the defensive end making just plays. And a perfect example there is we uh, both goalies are having the water break, well-deserved water break. So am but, I. That, <laughs> but Cody Jamison with the heads-up play, and he's in the defensive end again. You know what I mean? We, we, we've talked about the versatility of these Chiefs players. and We've had Joey Capito playing on the defensive end uh, tonight as well. And uh, Cody Jamison getting that ball and just heaving it, knowing this knowing how much space he has on the ceiling and just heaving it to Fennell and Fennell making an absolutely amazing catch, let alone the recognition, the creation of space and, and the, the the going from right to left to beat Allard. And he actually moved the stick on that one too. That It was crazy. What that, an insane play. The Halifax Thunderbird absolutely flying on that latest play. And we will see here what the response is here for Coburg with under 20 seconds to go here in the first. Bell working on his man in the corner. Here's Milligan on the near side. He's got the ball, feeds it over and shot. And it's going to ricochet all the way back in front of the bench. Bonberry will pick it up and that will do it. Here for the first period of play. What a period for both of these teams just a penalty filled affair as you said Daryl and Six Nations on the heels of some spectacular individual efforts and spectacular passes from end <laughs> to end even it's been getting a, the job done it's been a fun first period that's for certain 4-2 Six Nations they lead Coburg after 20 minutes of play we will be back and we will get to some award presentations after this you're watching Six Nations Lacrosse on Rogers TV
back inside the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena in the heart of the Grand River. The, the Six Nations of the Grand River, I should say. It is 4-2, Six Nations over Coburg through 20 minutes of play. And I'm not exactly an Oscars type of host. <laughs> You're um, a you know, I, I, I don't usually give out awards. I'm not usually the facilitator of such an honor. Well, tonight's so your is, first this chance. Is gonna be tonight's a, your day. This is going to be a new, uh, a, new, <laughs> a new thing for me. The 2022 Major Series Lacrosse Awards. There's six or seven There's awards. There's seven awards. Seven eight awards eight being in total. Out. We can't give out the eighth one because the playoffs aren't done yet. So. Yep. So we uh, we got some awards. We got some trophies to hand out. Virtual trophies. Virtual I guess trophies. Can, can the say because some of the winners are going to be in the locker room right now trying to get uh, ready for the second period of play of course we're into the first intermission the other game Peterborough and Brooklyn they're also in action here tonight but you know what enough of me talking Daryl <laughs> let's get to some awards we got some You're big good awards host. here You're good in awards major host. series lacrosse yeah we we have seven awards to hand out uh, and again we uh, with our partnership with Rogers near TV we thought this would be the perfect opportunity to do that uh, we've got some uh, sponsors presenting these awards and it's it, and it's been one of those seasons that uh, it, it, it's been a challenge to get going and, and and keep on going and it's been a phenomenal season and that's reflected of the uh, talent and uh, the, the play that's on the floor and we can't thank them enough can't thank the fans enough for being uh, a part of the ride so without a further ado I guess we're going to go with the awards our first award the Murphy award for most valuable player because you know what we don't know how to hand out awards we're going to go with the MVP first and why, no, why not no speeches by the way uh, this one's going to be presented by legend rings Cody Jamison well-deserved, the, the heart and soul of the Six Nations Chiefs. He had 12 goals, 21 assists for 33 points, 10 games. Uh, he was uh, he was voted by every team. He was a first pick by a lot of the teams. Uh, he's not the, the top scorer on the team, but uh, those intangibles, the, it's the Cody Jamison. I always say the Cody Jamison factor, and he's got that, and he's had that this summer for the Six Nations Chiefs, and that's uh, that, that just shows in the Six Nations Chiefs record. Yeah, then, 12, 12 goals 21 assists 33 points i mean he he was he's done a little bit count. of everything yep uh the next award is the merv mckenzie most valuable defensive player and that one's presented by our friends at uncommon Un fit who have outfitted most of the teams this season and that one is going to scott Domini, the defender for the cobra kodiaks and you know what scott Domini, we've talked a lot about him in this series he's been a lockdown defender all season long you don't need stats uh, uh to show you that he he's He's got great foot movement, and he, he's a lockdown defender. He uh, closes off those lanes. He has been phenomenal all summer long, so congratulations to Scott Dominey. Uh, the next award, the Gene Dopp Rookie of the Year Award, presented by Signature Lacrosse. And you know what? You have to go with Dyson Williams yeah, on this yeah. one for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. This kid's been unreal this season. Dyson Williams, uh, league leading scorer uh, with 12, or sorry, with 26 goals. He had, he's the lead point getting, or the point getter with 43 points. So Dyson Williams is the, uh, the, the rookie of the year, and he's also obviously the Bucko McDonald leading scorer, and that one is presented by our friends at True Temper Lacrosse, obviously. Led the league yep. in scoring. 40, 45 <laughs> points. Led the league in goals. scoring. Rookie of the year. And you know why? He's been phenomenal all season long. And another award winner, the Harry Lumley Award for uh, lowest goals against. And that one is presented by our friends at Lax Balls. Uh, tonight's starter for the Six Nations Chiefs, Dougie Jamison. Dougie Jamison. Uh, uh, the, the, the criteria for this one, you had to play in 50% of the games for your team. And Dougie Jamison with an unreal 8.88 goals against average. He's been he's been phenomenal, and for a team with an embarrassment of riches of goaltending, you have him and Warren Hill, two two number one goaltenders. But uh, Dougie Jamison, in a, in his share of time, he's uh, he's taken the bulk of the work and has been unreal this season for the Doug, or for the Six Nations Chiefs. 
and uh, the Terry Sanderson Coaching Staff Award. And that one is presented by our friends at Training Division, and that one's going to go to the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. And again, they've had a fantastic season. They've got young talent on that team, the likes of Dyson Williams, Launch Brad, the list goes on. They, they have stockpiled so much talent. Brad McArthur has done an unreal job stocking up on uh, talent, uh, young talent, and uh, and look at them, they're, they're, they're in a dogfight with the Peterborough Lakers in the playoff series. And then finally, the last award, the Jim Brady Award uh, for volunteer, uh, volunteerism and contributions to the game. And uh, this one is uh, th this one was a, uh, a special one to give. Uh, we, as uh, the Board of Governors, we uh, handed it out to Major Series Lacrosse. Uh, Tina Manning, the governor, one of the governors for the Brooklyn Lac Lacrosse Club and uh, our chair, uh, this season she suggested it in a nice email written and uh, for a, a lot of people that don't know the trials and tribulations that major series lacrosse has had to endure this uh, uh, not only this summer but uh, leading up to just getting this season going uh, it's been a long haul we're all volunteers here mm -hmm. and uh, we've um, I, I, as a member of that board of, of governors and a, a member of the executive as well I know I've put in a, probably more time on major series lacrosse than my own job and i'm not the only one every one every single one of the volunteers at major series lacrosse uh from our interim commissioner lynn withers all the way down to all the governors uh the training staffs the coaching staffs the players uh, it's a it's a tribute to uh, getting this season going and having a great season the, the, the great season that we're uh, that we had and the great playoffs and, and again unreal playoffs so far every game decided by one or two goals uh, every game's been a nail biter heck we, uh, they might all go seven you never know be just the way that they're going you know this is the part where I'm supposed to say something heartfelt Daryl Smart <laughs> but I think you took the words right out of my mouth I mean just the amount of work that's put in to get the season underway. I mean, even for myself, oh. when I was told to, uh, I was going to be, you know, commentating for the Six Nations Chiefs, I said yes, but then I was told, you know what, we're going to have to hold off for a little bit. <laughs> don't, we don't know what's going on. And then a few weeks later, hey, we got lacrosse back. And we're, we're thankful for that, and we're thankful for the fans uh, for sticking with us. Uh, it, like I said, it's been a long haul, and we can't thank the, the fans enough, uh, coast to coast, states, everywhere around the world. We know uh, the, the, the reach is out there, and, and again, a part of that is uh, Rogers Television and uh, your TV. They've been both phenomenal, and we can't thank. Uh, I, I don't think uh, the, the gratitude uh, could be enough. Uh, just uh, it's heartfelt. It's it's meaningful, and we we're we're just uh, very thankful for the efforts of everyone. So we're getting underway here for the second period, and got teary-eyed there, Mark. Yeah, a little bit. I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> right off the draw and shot by Ryan Haig, and that one's going to go wide, and a rebound's going to be picked up, and here's Ty Logan. Whistle's going to go, and. They're going to send, I think, Kaminga's going to go to the box here. Kaminga's going to the box. I wasn't even looking. I was actually looking at some of the stats. Uh, uh, we didn't get a chance to go over the last period, uh, but 16-14 uh, shots on net in, in favor of the Chiefs as Kaminga goes to the bench here, and he's going to jo join Austin Stotts, who is serving his misconduct and that is a big loss there when you have Austin Stotts yep. sitting there for an extended period of time this is the time for Coburg to capitalize Curtis shot just on the short side it's going to be blocked by Jamison comes across the line picked up by Simmons he gets bodied there by Logan and this will be picked up by Kelly and talking to, talking about some of those trials and tribulations I was talking to Eric Graham uh, one of the uh, governors for the Cobra Kodiaks before the game, we had a nice chat, and he was like, he was the one that that put the, those words into my mouth about if, if people only knew some of the stuff that we've had to deal with as a, as a league to get going, and uh, it's, it really is a tribute, and that was definitely uh, it's felt, and, and uh, again the gratitude of the fans. A lot of things happen behind the scenes, that is for sure. You. You, you don't necessarily know the amount of people and the amount of hours put in 
just behind the scenes when you get to see everybody on the floor here. Well, when you see a product like this, it's incredible. When you see, the honestly, the best lacrosse players in the world, the best indoor lacrosse players in the world are here. Yeah, that one's going to be sh shot off the wall. And it's not just here either, of course. No. we got the Western Lacrosse Association. Absolutely. The and winner of that. And I mean, think about the Western Lacrosse Association, what they were able to do this year. Seven teams, four making the playoffs, all four teams that made the playoffs finishing with an equal 12-6 and six record. The they had to go to a lot of tiebreakers there. They did. They did. And you know what? Uh, and again, the WLA has had a phenomenal regular season and a great start to their playoffs as well. The games are tight. And, yeah. And I believe it was Langley that, or was it Nanaimo? I forget. No, it was, was well, it? Langley, uh, the Langley Thunder leading their series one to nothing yeah, they against beat Victoria. The, which was a huge upset in that first game. Dane Dobby, of course, plays for San Diego in the NLL, had 34 goals uh, in the regular season. He had three goals, seven assists in that 15 to nine game one victory. A uh, product of Elora, just up the uh, just yep. up the road here. Dane Dobby, just incredible, and again, Austin Stotts knows him well. They're NLL teammates. And this will be picked up. And it's Vaughn Harris getting it into the corner for Sulver. Durston up in to the corner on the far side for Fennell. Fennell with a shot blocked down low by Orleman, and he'll just kick it up. Ryan Haig. Great stretch pass by Hag. Taking a page of the Chiefs' uh, first period book there. A 4-2 score, and over in Brooklyn, meantime, it is a 5-5 game. Shocker. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Those two teams have been battling hard. It's been wish fun I to could, watch. Wish I can have a, uh, oh, 17 minutes left in the second period in that other game in Brooklyn. We're at 16.52 left here. In, in the second here, Six Nations four, Coburg two, and that's going to be scooped up by the Toronto Rock product, Chris Weir. Chris Weir with a shot, and wow. what a save down low by Dougie Jameson. Made it look easy, too. That's the scary part. That's why he is an award winner here in 2022. Bell. Find Silver. Right off the bench was Durston as he fed his man. Eight on the shot clock. Bell's going to go after it against Romanich, and Romanich pushes him out of the way. Three on the clock. Shot and stopped by Orleman on Durston as he holds his head up high as he goes to the bench. The Kodiaks down by two. Milligan trying to feed Ben French. It'll be scooped up by Kaminga, but it's a bouncer and almost picked up. And now with some momentum, here comes up. Oh, Kevin Owen Hill. He had about three steps up. He thought he had the ball, but he had to turn back around and realize that ball is still hanging around center. French has the shot clock expires. And now the other way, here comes Joey Cupido. Cupido leaves it up for Brendan Bomberry. Tomberry feeds it over. And it ricochets off the corner and in for Chris Weir. Up top, finds Pilo. Pilo shoots and scores. What a ripper by Kalen Pilo. And it's a 4-3 game. He ripped that one. You're absolutely right. Keelan Pilon having a great playoff as we've talked about. Often John, uh, John Webb finding a diamond in the form of number 88, Keelan Pilon, he's, he just skipped that one by Dougie Jamison. Had all sorts of time here. Wind up, there's the double pump. Just that change of direction fooled Dougie Jamison on that one. That'll be his second of the game and fifth of the postseason. 4-3 is the score. Six Nations holding the lead. John Kitt finds Milligan. And now here's Ellerton, number 11, back to Milligan. It's funny that we've had some really great offensive bursts in the form of these goals, but the defense has been the story of this game. Curtis, shot by Simmons, oh and that one goes in. 
That's a shot by Alex Simmons. Alex Simmons, my goodness, and he makes it 4-4. Four, four. Surprise, surprise, we're all tied up, Mark. Alex Simmons with a, just from the side, and, the, and again, just a different look. He, you know what, there's a, a different look from the shot, and that one's an elusive shot to take. He's going from the side like that. And, that's a beautiful shot beating Dougie Jamison here, and we're all tied up at fours with 14.46 remaining here in the second period. And that is goal number four for Alex Simmons in the postseason to go along with nine assists. He's got a goal and a helper here in game three. As you saw him, he was going left to right, and he crossed over his body to make that shot, so that change of direction, the change of point of view, that's why they Tripped say lacrosse is a game of inches. And angles. You can say that again. Some of the angles we've seen here in this game even. And Brian Rice will pick it up. Rice goes back in up top to the side. And Dougie Jamison with the save. He had to look behind him, though, as that ball rolled into the corner. And here's Sam LeClaire. Number 92 feeds it up top. Fennell finds Cody Jamison. Jamison gets off the four checker. The ball rolling in behind on the near side. Silver trying to scoop it up. Three on the shot clock. And that one's just gonna be pinned along the boards with the shot clock expiring on Sam LeClaire and his mates. And a wholesale change made by Six Nations. Same thing for Coburg as they get the ball back here with 13.30 to go in the second. This young Coburg Kodiaks team has a swagger about them. You can tell, they, you know what? They, they, they know they're hanging with them. Simmons turns around. He found Ben French with a shot and with the shot clock expiring, ripped it wide. A one hopper, and it's going to be picked up here by Durston. Durston for Harris. Harris with a shot. Big block by Kelly. Shot clock refreshed. Harris just coming off the bench is Jamison. Oh boy. Jamison with a shot, and that one is going to be picked up here. Right through the Erleman. seal. Right through the seal. Cody Jamison just had that little bit of room and he sprinted right through there and then he shot and saved by Orlman. So I should say Alex Simmons actually has two assists in this game to go along with that latest goal. He's got 14 points in this series. Now dancing up is Aaron Woods and he's unable to find his man. A fresh shot clock here for the Kodiaks. Milligan up for Pilon. Pilon looking shot blocked by Logan as it went toward the goal. Just goes wide. And here's number 27, Woods. Finds Milligan. And the ball is going to roll around and picked up here by Joey Capito. Capito's got to get away from French, though. French on the four check there as he had to make the Chiefs work for that one. Bomberry in for Fennell. Fennell on the far side. Jamison off the bench for Dalton Silver. Silver shoots and scores! Dalton Silver, like the Buffalo Bandit he is. He barrels his way toward the goal and he gives Six Nations their lead right back. Dalton Silver, the hero, the unsung hero in game number two, comes back and he scores another one here. Look at the room here. All sorts of room, and he just saw the opportunity, put it up top cheese, and went bar down on that one. And Dalton Solver, four goals in two games so far. Unsung hero indeed, Daryl Smart. And Six Nations just continues to respond to the Kodiaks. And now running up is Ryan Hay, and he tries to respond, and he gets taken down. That was a great foot efforts. race. That was a great foot race. Stretched up here for Cupido. Kevin Owen Hill with the hustle play on defense in that back end. Vaughn Harris, number 28, has it, shoots and scores. 
Vaughn Harris goes short side down low, and he extends the Six Nations lead. I was just waiting for Vaughn Harris to, to explode in this one, and he had all sorts of room. He was just kind of picking his time, or taking his time and trying to pick his spot, and he, boy, the, the guy can rip a shot. You know, Vaughn Harris had a pair of goals in game one. He had three helpers. Look at all the room. Two. Look at the room he had. And you're going to see it here again. You know what? And, I, and this goes back to game number two where Vaughn Harris, everybody knows about that laser beam of a shot, but he went down. He went deep. He, instead of taking the shot, sitting back and taking the shot, he went deep. And he scored a goal and then he dove in. And, you know what? That's keeping you, that's keeping your defense honest. Fennell up for Silver. Silver has a shot blocked and scooped up. A one-handed catch made by a fan in the all-orange seats here. Here's Brendan Bomberry with a shot blocked before it reaches the goal, and it's going to be scooped up. Rice. Looks, shoots right into the chest of Dougie Jameson, and he'll pitch it up to Bomberry. 10.30 to go here in the second. 6-4, six, six nations. They have a 2-0 series lead. Looking for the stranglehold. Bomberry got it up for Durston. Bomberry with a shot kicked away by Orleman. But the Chiefs get it back. Bomberry into the corner. This is Sam LeClaire. Up top on the far side is Eric Fennell trying to reversal. 16 on the shot clock. Durston turns around, goes one way, goes the other way, and feeds it all the way. And it's going to be Brendan Bomberry picking it back up. He feeds it up. Oh, and boy. Just missing Sam LeClaire there and behind the goal. Jameson had LeClaire all alone. And now here's Chris Weir. Feeds it up for French, number 22, gets it up. Shot goes wide and taken down there. Chris Atwood as Tyson Bomberry goes all the way down to the floor and Bomberry with a shot. Heck of a save. Tried to fool Orleman and Orleman wasn't gonna bite. Great save by Orleman, didn't bite, you're absolutely right. That rhymed. It did. I'm a poet and I don't even know it. Oh my goodness. The dad jokes are coming. Watch out. <laughs> Shot there. Stop. Dad by jokes. Jameson. Told you I'm on holidays. The dad jokes are in full effect right now. <laughs> We're well, into the dog days of summer, as they say. Oh, yeah. Kaminga. That's it up there for Harris. Found Silver. And here's Durston. Durston and just picked up there by Connolly. Good block and now a two on two developing. Possibly an odd man rush. But Connolly is going to wait, but he takes a shot. It was blocked before it even reaches the goal crease. And it'll be picked up here by Joey Cupido. Some changes here by the Chiefs. Bomberry. Brendan Bomberry looking, finds Fennell, and Fennell with a shot stopped by Orleman. If you're just joining us, that is Kevin Orleman in the net for Coburg. Of course, Steve Orleman played in games one and two. Kevin getting the start here tonight. Now Sam LeClaire, couple of spin moves. Finds Fennell, 10 on the shot clock. Looking for LeClaire, LeClaire, five left. Not much time, he rips it, and it goes wide. Brendan Bomberry with a shot before the buzzer, and that one's gonna be blocked down low by Orleman. The Chiefs just moving the ball so well right now. And honestly, it's a, it's a credit to the Kodiak defense. They're, they're not giving them much, so they had to worry that they're having to work that outside. Scores! Gareth Haig goes in between the legs of Dougie Jameson, and it's a 6-5 game. That's a really sharp shot. That's that's for sure. <laughs> what a shot. I think we're going to get a water break right after that. Dougie Jameson going straight toward the bench. 
Oh, I would too. Just a nice pass and a beautiful shot. And again, that's that skip shot. It's been fooling Dougie Jamison. Oh, not a skip shot, but just right into the feet. Uh, I've noticed that a little bit on Dougie. They, they, they've been shooting into his feet quite a bit, trying to, to get him crossed up a little bit. As he has a bit of a discussion here, and then his goaltender mate, Warren Hill. Again, it's one of those things where you, you have the advantage of having a guy like Warren Hill on the bench, and it just kind of uh, Warren notices something. He'll tell uh, he'll tell his partner in crime. Those two guys have played together for an awfully long time, all the way up through uh, through the the minor ranks and. The, I remember covering them when they both played for the Six Nations Rebels when they were very, very young. They both, him, the, the two of them, Chase Martin was in the mix as well. So they, you know what? All three guys have played Chiefs games this season, but uh, they've all uh, they've all had their their time through the ranks in the Six Nations system. Some of these players, of course, a member of that Man Cup Championship in 2016, capping off those three championships in four years, a six-time champion. Man Cups, Minto Cups, Founders Cups. I mean, walking through the hallways here in the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena, you're just finding trophies everywhere. <laughs> Shot by Milligan is going to go wide. Goes off of a leg. And of course, the Six Nations Rivermen, the, the senior B team, they're still in the playoff hunt. I believe they're playing Oakville in the second round right now. Here's Vaughn Harris. Some familiar faces on that Oakville Rock team, MSL fans. Austin Stotts. Here's Silver. Silver. Great defense there by the Kodiaks, keeping him at bay. It's great shot footwork. toward the goal, and that one's going to go wide. Vaughn Harris with a shot and rips it off of the leg of Eric Fennell. And he's going to try and shake that one he's off as he goes to, shake to the bench. That off. And Austin Stotts back in the game from that misconduct. Great to see. Oh, Picked right up by that. Squire Hill. Great defense by him to just chop the ball out of the stick. Just clinical lacrosse That's pure, by the youngster. Uh, just pure hustle and not giving up on the play. Jameson tries to find Finnell, who's right it. back on. He's playing some inspired lacrosse, Cody Jameson is. There's Connolly at the top shot in that one. I think that one hit the iron. That might have hit the iron or might have hit his, uh, his glove, but either way, it bounced all the way into Ty Logan's stick down to the other end. Wholesale change here for the Chiefs. Sam LeClaire goes near the top of the key, finds Jameson inside, and that one's going to be stopped as Austin stops. I love that little shovel pass by Cody Jamison. He's outside and he's just trying to get the ball deep inside, trying to just make his teammates better, and getting them opportunity after opportunity to get that ball in the net. Just the little plays make the big difference. And here's Vaughn Harris. Oh shot boy. It. No, he hit the iron there. Vaughn Harris, oh, so close. He had the goaltender beat, but he couldn't beat the iron. Another example of why we were talking about it. he keeps a, he keeps the defense honest. Uh, Von Harris does. He has that. We talked about that laser beam of a shot, and that's why he scored that goal. But uh, defense have to be honest on him. As a result, the plays like that where he'll go in deep and get that scoring opportunity. A quick scoring update: 4:36 left in the second. Peterborough is now up eight to five on Brooklyn. And of course, game four of that series, Peterborough up two games to one. Kind of. Yep. Kind of. We'll, uh, we'll see. Uh, yeah, we got we got to wait for uh, uh, some statement to come out because I do believe an appeal has been made. Yeah, an appeal has been made to uh, by Brooklyn. Uh, hearing is going to be on Monday. This is an OLA thing. Uh, the OLA is going to, has been uh, taking the reins on this one, not the MSL. Uh, OLA is going to be doing the hearing on this and uh, hopefully tomorrow at some point we uh, we have a decision it would be nice to have 348 left in the second period here there's nothing going to the boardroom in this series as of yet 
five on the shot clock. Thank goodness. You can say that again. What don't, a series we have had. Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see anything in the boardroom again. <laughs> I don't want to see a boardroom or a Zoom call for a very, very long time. <laughs> Oh man, this road to the man cup has some bumps and it's bruises. Been a, it's on been it, a windy one. For sure. I just want to. I just want to see a, a straight, uh, a straight line to the man cup. Ontario is going to host this, and it's going to be a great one. Uh, obviously, we, you were talking about the parody in the WLA and the par parody here in the uh, in MSL. It's been a fantastic summer for senior A lacrosse across Canada, and kudos to all those teams that down on the west side of the country and uh, here in the MSL. Langley and Victoria, Coquitlam and Nanaimo in the... Some phenomenal matchups, man. You can say that oh. again. And I get to listen to one of my favorite lacrosse announcers of all time, Teddy Jenner. Shout out to Teddy Jenner. He, Teddy, you better be watching the Six Nations uh, Coburg game. Shot, it's gonna go wide as Curtis is slow to get up for Brooklyn. 10 on the shot clock here, shot from a sharp angle is going to go off of the goaltender and wide and ricochet all the way back in here. Brendan Bomberry with a fresh shot clock. Up top, Von Hennig oh, oh, oh boy. Tough cheese when he oh, oh. the cookies. And it is seven to five. Look at those quick hands. Von Harris with the quick stick. And that all started with, <laughs> guess who? Cody Jamison, but boy, oh boy, Vaughn Harris. Just the quick, just the quick hands on Vaughn Harris. He can hurt you in so many different ways. And again, Cody Jamison, just that intangible thing where he's all over the floor. He's behind the net there with the pass on that one. Uh, and again, in the first period, he's down behind his own net making passes for assists. Doesn't matter where you are on the floor, if you can be a facilitator like that, you're going to be a powerhouse often in said, this league. Often said, one of the best clutch lacrosse players you'll ever come across. Definitely a Chiefs legend, that's for sure. Cody Jamison, a member of the Halifax side in the NLL. Making his presence felt here in this league this year. For 17 goals, 43 assists, 60 points in 16 games for the Thunderbirds before coming here and, and something being one of the leaders. And it's something about playing for your community too. And that goes across the board for a lot of uh, MSL players playing for their community teams, whether you're, you're in Coburg, you're in Peterborough, Brooklyn, Oakville. Uh, hey, you know what, you're, you're playing for your community and it's a, it's a big deal and, and a lot of these players on this Six Nations Chiefs team, uh, a large chunk of this team is local and uh, it's, uh, it's one of the more local teams that they've had in a long time and, and uh, there's a lot of pride here and, and it's showing in the stands. John Bon Jovi said it best. Who says you can't go home? <laughs> Von Harris up top, Stotts shot, and that one's going to go up top and wide. Scooped up by Ooh. Kelly, and Kelly having to get away from LeClaire, who one's ha one hands him with 36 seconds to go in the second. Uh, Sam LeClaire, that's a, that's a great defensive play because Kelly was streaking down on that right side along the glass. He could have easily just sprinted out, but you know what? Sam LeClaire stuck with him, had the stick in the air, he had the footsteps right beside him, and he, and he, he, he couldn't go at 100% because he knew he had Sam LeClaire right on him, and that's a great defensive play by Sam LeClaire. That mental game, shot clock and game clock, the exact same. As the Kodiaks look for a buzzer beater, down by two, that one's gonna be shot wide, scooped up by Pilo. Shot right as the buzzer goes, and that's gonna be stopped by Jamison. And it is seven to five, Six Nations. After two periods of play here at the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena, this is game three of the first round playoff series between Six Nations and Coburg. A couple of special guests coming up after this. You're watching Six Nations Lacrosse on Rogers TV.
welcome back to the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena. Daryl Smart here, Louis Zunga, Aiden Fern, the Haudenosaunee Nationals U21 team. Welcome to the ILA guys, and it's uh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, you guys are going to be off to Limerick, Ireland tomorrow, I believe, tomorrow morning? Yep. Tomorrow morning, uh, you guys are going to be off and running. You guys are going to be competing at the World of Lacrosse U21 Championships. Louis, it's got to mean a lot to you. Yeah, I mean, traveling overseas to play for, I mean, play for our people basically because we're not we're not a nation just like all the other all the other teams heading out there. We're we're our own sovereign nation. So playing for our people, playing for our community, and playing for the people who can't anymore, and it definitely means a lot. What's a, what's it mean to you? For to me, it means everything. I've been. I've been looking up to players, and I've been looking to play for this team for so long, and now to finally get to find, like finally be able to have the chance to play, it's, it's just it, it, not necessarily overwhelming, but it's it's just pretty crazy. I'm still trying to get my head on. That's awesome, and Aiden. Uh, again, you're, you're you've had the similar journey. Uh, it, it, it's got it's been a long time coming for you as well. You've known about this for a long time. Uh, what's it finally? And, and again, you're you're wearing a Haudenosaunee Nationals. Jersey, uh, but you also have that Irish lineage as well. So this one's going to be a huge one for you, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, like you said, long time coming, yeah. and uh, especially I think this week it was good. We, uh, we we've been in training camp for a few days now here in uh, Six Nations, and uh, you know the team's coming together well. We're looking good, and I know the first time uh, yesterday, uh, I think the program was ever done is we uh, we did ceremony there at a lodge, and uh, you know it went a long way, and I think we've all kind of connected as as brothers now. Uh, so you know it's gonna be good to get out there, finally get there to Ireland and do our business there, and you know hopefully bring home a gold. Nice. And in, in, in saying that about ceremony. I know uh, being part of the uh, Iroquois Nationals, uh, the men's team, the indoor lacrosse championships, they did that. At a, they, they went to Longhouse. What does it mean to you guys to, to be able to do those the, those certain things before to prepare, Louis? Uh, for us, it's just to bring us together as one. Like, we all want to put our minds together. I mean, we do that. We're basically probably going to be unstoppable. Nice. What do you guys like about your team? Louis, go first. We're, we're all getting as close as we possibly can. I mean, I've played against and played with most of these players, and to play with them all again and to be on the same team, I mean, it's, it's, it's special. And what's it mean to, to, to be playing at the I or watching this game at the ILA in preparation, watching some of the guys? Uh, you guys uh, are Chiefs in the future. I know I'm talking to Dewey Jacobs about this, and you guys are the Chiefs of the future. What's it mean to be just to be watching these guys kind of kind of giving you that inspiration for the for, for Limerick? I mean, uh, I think I can speak for both of us here saying, you know, uh, this arena especially, you know, we grew up playing here our whole lives, and, uh, you know, him for the Rebels, me for the Arrows here now. Um, there's just some certain power and medicine to be in, in this in this place, in this space during a lacrosse game. And, uh, you know, hopefully the Chiefs can come out top tonight and nice. bring that series home, right? So what do you like about uh, the team to, besides coming together? What, 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 kind of, what kind of brand of lacrosse should we all expect uh, when we're watching you guys in Limerick? Uh, you, you should expect the brand of lacrosse like no other, right? We're going to be there working as a team. Uh, the thing I like about our team specifically is we have that underdog mentality, right? No one's going in there with uh, the expectations of us bringing home that gold. So uh, that takes off a lot of pressure off us. You know, we can kind of go in there, play the creator's game the way it's supposed to be played, and just, uh, you know, go out there, have fun, and make our people proud. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Aiden. Thank Louis, you. thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank and good us. luck in Limerick. Bring home that gold. No, pre thank There's you. no pressure, but bring home the gold. <laughs> and have you, fun yeah. with it. And enjoy the moment. For sure. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. And we'll be back uh, for a break.
Welcome back to Six Nations Lacrosse here on Rogers TV. It is game three of this first round series. Six Nations looking for the series stranglehold. They're 20 minutes away from doing just that if they can hold on to this two goal lead. They're up seven of five through 40 minutes of play. And it has been quite, quite the contest. Daryl Smart, a lot of physicality in that first period. It kind of died down in the second period, but we still got a lot of goals uh, to account for here as you and see again, the scoring and, and, right here. And again, a game of runs. You've got Keelan Peel on Alex Simmons scoring for the Kodiaks and the Chiefs with a response. Uh, we talk a lot about the response of the Kodiaks, but this time it was the uh, response of the uh, Six Nations Chiefs, Dalton Solver and Vaughn Harris. And then uh, Hag and Harris again, Harris killing you in different ways. He, he's been phenomenal all season long. He's been phenomenal during this playoff as well, just scoring in different ways. And it's been a, it's been a, a great display of offense. But like you said, the defense on both sides, you have to give props to both, both sides on the defense. Uh, they, they're both locking down. And it shows in the scores. These aren't high scoring games that, uh, that, that you see. In many lacrosse games, it's all about the defense, and I think this third period is going to be no different here with uh, the defenses uh, stepping up and really locking things down as uh, the Chiefs hold down a 7-5 to five lead here. Those Kodiak Bears looking to bear down and get back into this series. Again, they're down two games to none in this best of seven. Game three tonight. Game four will be back in Baltimore on Wednesday. That could be a chance for the Chiefs to try and sweep the series. But nonetheless, we still got a lot of lacrosse between now and lot. then. You never know what can happen with these two teams. Of course, both games in this series so far have been decided by a single goal. As Aaron Woods picks it up here, number 27 for Coburg to start off the third period, he finds Simmons. Simmons finds his man up top, over, shot, and that's in! What a shot by Aaron Woods, and he closes the gap to one. Aaron Woods is a speedy guy. This one, that was just a shot that beat Dougie Jameson and just eludes him. And if you're a Kodiak uh, fan, that's the that's the kind of goal that you uh, want to see, or that's what you want to see. Period is to to get on that board early, make this game a one goal game, get this big crowd uh, a little bit more silent, uh, as we see here on the replay. Woods was just a nice shot. You know what? He just didn't put much on it. He just did quick used the uh, d Six Nations defender as a screen and beat Dougie Jameson on out. Quick scoreboard update across in Brooklyn. It's 10-6 Peterborough after the second period of play. Peterborough with seven second period goals in that one after Brooklyn actually had the lead through one. Talk about a game of runs. I can say that again. Under a minute gone here in this third period here in Six Nations. Austin Stotts steps up, but good stout defense around the crease by <laughs> the Kodiaks, about three of them around, and Fennell with a shot as that one bounces off the boards, in behind the goal, up high and into the rafters. And a great defensive uh, stand to, uh, to just follow up on that goal by the Kodiaks. There's Simmons, or rather shot down low by Chris Atwood. He takes a shove there for his troubles. And here's Brendan Bomberry. Bomberry waits and he finds Durston in the, in the corner. Durston for 76 gets it up, or rather he's number 78, I should say. And a move there by oh boy. Silver scores. Dalton Silver picking things up from game two. He's continuing the hot streak here in game three. What a game he has had here on the home floor. Another big goal to extend the lead. Dalton Silver with another phenomenal goal. This guy, uh, like a lot of the other Chiefs players, just does things in different ways. He just, with the stutter step, he changed his direction, cha uh, created the space, and then he gave him enough room to cut right up as close to the middle as possible to beat Kevin Orleman, and we've got ourselves an 8-6 game. What a pickup by Dewey James. 
or De Dewey Jacobs. What a what a pickup in the form of Dalton Solver. He has been phenomenal throughout the season and in this playoffs, particularly the last couple of games, especially. And of course, a product of that U.S. Boxler, of course, U.S. Boxler, the national championships going on, I believe it's in San Jose. Stepped in there by Gareth Haig, uh, Haig and a save by Jameson. And Owen Hill will just leave this back here for Fennell. Austin Stotts, Stotts moves around, oh, scores! Oh boy! Austin Stotts, Air Audi is at it again, but he is down after that one. Oh man, I wish I had a still camera on that one. I was in that corner, oh man, oh man. What a play by Austin Stotts, but are we really surprised by now, just honestly? Are we really surprised line. by this? This is, this is just, it, it, this look, is just another the, game. Look at the art. Oh man. I wish I had the still camera on that one. Or even the, just the video camera, just a little bit of content there. Man, oh man, look at this. And, and that all started with the, he, he just beats his defender and that was all about going at him and instead of just using the physicality, and that's a perfect example of using your physicality, but in this instance, he didn't use the physicality to pop the shoulder in to create the space. The defender backed up because he didn't want to get hit and he, it just created the space for Stotts and Stotts went in and Superman dive and Air Audi ready for takeoff and we're at nine to six. Hang that one in the Louvre as we have a three goal lead for the Chiefs. Here's Silver trying to find Sam LeClaire but it went right in on goal and LeClaire is able to pitch that one right back to Bomberry for Austin Stotts right back up onto the floor. Just shaking off the cobwebs from that last goal. He was sitting in behind the bench after that goal just to get a quick rest. But he's right back at it again as that one shot right in on Kevin Orland and he makes the save. Can you tell him a photographer I'm still in envy of that one? I wish I had the still camera, man. Oh, trust <laughs> Stoppage me, I... in time. Oh, Eric Graham, I know he's got the camera behind the Cobra Kodiak bench. Uh, I hope he got a shot of that. I know I'm quite the photographer in the OHL and you know I feel that one all the time when you're up in the press box and you see a phenomenal play you wonder what could have been and oh what boy. could it be for that one. Great skip shot by Curtis. Riley Curtis answers for the Kodiaks. The Cardiac Kodiaks are not going away. I really like this Cobra Kodiaks team. They've really shown a lot in this series. They've shown a lot during the season, but here we go. Here's on the replay. Curtis will get the ball and just, you know what, he just cuts right in. That's just a great, great, you know what, he beat Tyson Bell. Tyson Bell's going to uh, go to the bench. He's not happy with that one, but Curtis just beat Tyson Bell, got through the seal, and nice shot, beats Dougie Jamison. And we're now at 9-7. Back and forth we go. I feel like I've said that a number of times in this series for these two teams. No matter how big the gap gets, they just know how to respond. Here's Stotts. Gets it up top. Dancing in was Vaughn Harris, but he loses the ball. And the Kodiaks will pick it up. This is Nick Ellerton, number 11, who fed it up. And Cam Milligan, the captain, number seven, has it here. Gets it up top for Haig. Simmons for Milligan. Ten on the shot clock. Up top for Curtis. Curtis with a shot, and he is unable to put that one toward the goal. Good defense by the Chiefs there. And now the Chiefs move up. Kevin Owen Hill, Dalton Silver. Looking to create some space. He does so for Cody Jamison, who just pitches it back to Sam LeClaire. Cody Jamison runs up from near to far. And that ball goes right into the bench. And it will be Brooklyn ball here. This is Atwood. Atwood getting hammered there by X Squire Hill. Still has the ball though. 
13 on the shot clock. Pitched back to Milligan. This is Woods. And now Atwood shot, and that one's gonna go wide and ripped all the way back. Ike's, Ike's player here. You know, we're talking about a kid that uh, plays for the plays junior A. He's playing an MSL playoff, and he's showing no give back on the defensive end. He's been fantastic. Comes into this lineup filled with professionals and definitely looking not out of place. That is for sure. Dancing around there as Ellerton gets around a few players and finds Romanich. Inside, shot by Pilo, stopped by Jamison. He had to look for the ball there only for a moment. And Bell will pick it up. Bell for Durston. Number 78 gets it back for Jamison. Up top, that is Silver. Silver on the far side. Looking to create some space. Silver for Fennell. Fennell shot oh. scores. Eric Fennell puts the Chiefs into double digits here in game three. Almost the same type of goal Fennell scored in the first period. Eric Fennell is feeling it, that's for sure. What a shot. Can't really analyze that too much. He just gets the ball and rips it. Hey, sometimes Goal with goals like that, there doesn't need to be no a lot of analysis. It's just cut and paste. Basically, and copy and paste. Cop and just watch it. Copy and paste from the first period. That was almost the exact same goal, exact same shot in the location. Kaminga getting his man into the boards. The ball is loose. And it will be the Kodiaks that will get possession here. And I seem to be having trouble with my live scoring, at least in this game here. So I don't know exactly how many points Dalton Silver has. But nonetheless, there's a shot. We can tell you again that it is a 10-7 game as Tyson Bonberry has to get off of Gareth Haith. Or Garrick, Gareth Haig, that is a tongue twister and a half. Fidel on the near side. Pitches it up with 12.49 to go. Sam LeClaire, LeClaire in, stopped by Orleman. Certainly is a different Chiefs team from that game one here at the ILA, that's for sure. You know, a lot of, you know, Just confidence. You read some of the post-game comments from some of the Chiefs from game one, they know what Coburg brings to the dance. Mm -hmm. And they know that they cannot take their foot off the gas pedal, shot in on goal and stopped by Jameson again. Because if you take your foot off the gas, that's when you're gonna see a fourth ranked Coburg Kodiaks team get some momentum, feel some life, and then all of a sudden you can find yourself on the heels of elimination. As we get another look at our out-of-town scoreboard, it is Peterborough 10, Brooklyn 6 in the third period. Of course, the winner of that series will meet the winner of this series in the major series lacrosse final. You know what the nice thing about that, Mark, is? If you're watching this game, you'll be able to watch that Peterborough-Brooklyn game on the MSL YouTube page or on MSL TV as soon as uh, our friends at Rogers TV Durham get us the file. We'll be uploading it to the uh, MSL YouTube page that has all of the uh, game, full game replays from this season from our Rogers affiliates and of course our friends at your TV. We've got the highlights from each uh, home game in Peterborough and in Coburg. So and thank you very much to your TV and Rogers TV for, the, for that. And you'll want to do it soon, of course, game f uh, game four, game five, rather, in the Peterborough-Brooklyn series goes tomorrow in Peterborough. That series is going to wrap up this week, regardless if we go to game, game seven, I believe. He can see, yeah, that is correct. You know, we look at this series, of course, game four is on Wednesday, so there's a 
you know, Monday, Tuesday off for both of these teams. You can consider that a travel 48 <laughs> hours for those two squads. And then day to ice down. Yeah. Game five on Friday, right back here. Shot oh, and scores, whoa. flying through the air is Alex Simmons. And he puts Coburg to within two. Alex Simmons is just a, a lot like Aaron, Wo uh, Aaron Woods. The, the two, they, they beat you with their feet. Their, their speed's phenomenal. And uh, more than one occasion, uh, it, Alex Simmons has beat the uh, Six Nations Chiefs defensive core here and then this is a great example here as we watch the replay you know what he's just gonna blow by the defender here blew by two blew by one guy defender uh, had the the secondary defender Kaminga had uh, couldn't it just couldn't get to him he dives across the crease but just before he gets to the far side is able to tuck it in the near side yep just that that Amaz misdirection uh, makes the connection. Amazing foot speed, but equally amazing hands on that one by Alex Simmons. And we've said it a couple of times. He's had a phenomenal uh, playoff so far. And guess what? We're, we're within two. We've got ourselves uh, another barn burner on our hands here, Mark. How's the voice? It's a lot better than for uh, game one. I think I'm learning uh, a bit about conditioning, if you will. A bit about conditioning? Do you have a chicken wrap before? I did no not. No chicken wrap. Uh, I had to mention the chicken wraps. There's three guarantees in life, death, taxes, and Daryl Smart mentioning the chicken, chicken wraps wrap. on this broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Cam Milligan. Oh, just missing to intercept the pass, and there's going to be a penalty call here against the Chiefs. A bit of a momentum shift here. Woods with a shot. That one's going to go wide, and the shot clock expires, and the Kodiaks do have possession of the ball again. Shot on goal, and Jamison just steps right in front of the ball there, makes the save, and looks like it's going to be Kevin Owen Hill going to the box. Uh, just uh, you just have that feeling with the uh, momentum is just shifting a little bit not fully but there's just that little momentum shift here in favor of the Cobra Kodiaks 945 left we got half this third period to go and you can and you can see the Kodiaks on the floor just yep. trying to get their bearings collected right. Simmons Milligan Woods Pilo this is a young team and they've Riley got Curtis young legs on the floor. they've got some young legs here Simmons Finds Curtis. Up top for Simmons. Back to Milligan. Up top and shot blocked by Jamison. Pelo going after it and Logan. A couple of hacks in there. Cupido, Billy D, and Bell on the floor here for Six Nations. A heck of a defensive core. We got Joey Cupido here killing the penalty. Can do a bit of everything. He really does. Simmons for Milligan with a shot. He just missed the short side. And that's going to ricochet all the way back the other way, right in on the goaltender for the Kodiaks. And now the Chiefs get possession here with a minute 14 left in the penalty. Fresh shot clock to work with, Durston. He's on the floor with Austin Stotts. And... Doesn't pitch to him. He goes actually to the far side. To Vaughn Harris. Vaughn Harris takes a turnaround shot. Saved by Orleman. And the ball bounces. And taken here by the Kodiaks. That's this Kodiaks defense just hunkering right down. They know they cannot let too many more in if they want to keep into this game. Pilo to Simmons. Pitch and catch there, 10 on the shot clock. Pilo looking, finds French. French back to Pilo. Pilo with a shot, stopped by Jamison. And now up the floor go the Chiefs. Good move there to get around the defender is Jerry Stotts. Jerry Stotts got a stick in the face. As did Brendan Bomberry down to the other end. The physicality in this third period 
Oops. Not as what you saw in the first, but nonetheless, there's still a little bit of that chippiness. Well, they're not crossing the uh, crossing the line. They're just uh, they're, they're they're using that intimidation factor. And like we've said in numerous times throughout the series, Cobra Kodiak's really not uh, not giving in. It's uh, that it's that playoff lacrosse mentality. Oh, and it's the will too. What will these teams be willing to do for a championship? That is the question. Milligan tries to find his man, but goes back to Simmons, and Jameson makes the save. And <laughs> my goodness, and Billy G. And now he's going to go to the box, and he is incensed. He knocked down Simmons. He stepped over him. He stepped on top of him, had a couple of words, and the official says, you are going to the box, sir. And Simmons and Bell having a couple of words on the floor there, too. There's that chippiness we were just chip, talking about. We were just, uh, just about crossing the line, and then all of a sudden you cross the line, and Billy D is not happy. Be interesting to see it. It's a two-minute minor. And throws the helmet in the box. And he is just... Here's the replay. Words, so he just the runs him over. And he, had, had that couple of, that, that extra second there, I was, think that might have been what that's was That's what going. it was. It yep. wasn't the hit, it was the extra, it was the extra after the hit. <laughs> he just unloads on poor Alex Simmons and, and props to Alex Simmons for just taking it. Of course, Billy D. Smith playing in his second playoff game here. He didn't play in game two. He had a minor penalty in game one. Seeing a bit more time in the penalty box in game three here. As the power play starts up here for Coburg. Shot toward the goal, and that one's going to go wide. Bouncing ball. Who's going to pick it up? It is Milligan. Three on the shot clock. Shot down low, and Jameson with another save. And like we said before, when uh, Billy D made his uh, season debut, he just brings that uh, he brings that intimidation factor. He brings that roughness, uh, that playoff lacrosse uh, that, that you need just to get under the skin and maybe to uh, kind of get to some of these younger uh, Cobra Kodiak players. But uh, <laughs> Alex Simmons just taking it, and uh, he'll be back out there. Austin Stotts. Six Nations up by two. Oh. Austin Stotts trying to do it all. Oh. And he just missed the top corner. Oh, man. It's fun to watch. The human highlight reel that is Austin <laughs> really Stotts. Is. Six goals in game one. He had another marker in game two. Should just throw a GoPro camera, uh, Insta360 on him. Just those, on the lid. Those listening in the truck, if we can find a GoPro camera for Austin Stotts, if it's regulation that we can do that, that would be something to see. Oh, man. Eric Fennell with a shot. A one-hopper uh, goes wide. Get the old Insta360 on him. Fresh shot clock here for Coburg. As they have just about 20 seconds left. Billy D just about to get out of the box. Simmons. Milligan back to Simmons. To Pilo, back to Simmons. Simmons blocked. Oh, great what play block by Capito. Joey Capito on a breakaway. He's got Simmons on him. Capito, shot stopped. And he nearly runs over Orleman. What a defensive play by Joey Capito on that. He closed in. He, he anticipated the... The, the pass closed the gap, got the ball, and sprinted all the way down and nearly ran over and made sure he didn't run over his good buddy, Kevin Orleman. And here's the steal. Here's number 26, Jerry Stotts. Number of Syracuse in the NCAA. Despite the physicality, there's been a lot of respect in this uh, series between these two teams. Here's Sam Leclerc, and I mean that's what you get. I mean a lot of, a lot of these players they've known each other oh, through, through the ranks. I mean whether it's a number of your hometown players yeah. here playing in the MSL, going for that Man Cup, or even on the professional circuit in the NLL. Some of these teams, you know, they're a mishmash of some of those NLL teams. I mean you got players that are teammates. Yep. Number of teammates on both sides here. Jameson with a fresh shot clock. We're back to five aside. 
with under four minutes to go in regulation. Six Nations looking for the three nothing series lead. Silver for Jameson. Bomberry trying to look for Silver. There it is again, he's got that double team treatment and he was trying to dish it off to Silver and a great closing off of the lane. Cody Jameson, a goal and four assists in this game. Eric Finnell, three goals, three assists. Simmons trying to look for the corner there. He's got two goals and three helpers in this one. Here's Kevin Owen Hill. He'll just leave it back there for Stotts. Air Adi's got a goal and a helper in this one. Of course, saw a lot of time in the penalty box there in that second, in that uh, first and second period. Trying to do some damage here. Stotts rips it toward the goal and Orland with the save. This is Owen down. Six Nations on mass, on their bench, knocking their sticks along the boards. 10 on the shot clock. Curtis Milligan up top, and that one stopped, and it's gonna be picked up here. Here's Jerry Stotts. Had the open net there as Orland was sprinting down back. And I believe that's why you heard Six Nations banging their sticks along the boards. Yep. Trying to get the attention of their mates on the floor. Here's Durston. Durston looking for a screen. Durston up top. Durston, he tried to pull the trigger, but just as he tried to do so, had the ball knocked out of his stick. And the whistle goes. A timeout's going to be called here that was a great, by Coburg. That was a great defense. Sorry about that, Mark. That was a great defensive play by uh, Curtis Romanchuk on, on that uh, Jordan Durston drive. Uh, Jordan had the had the stick. He was ready to fire, and Romanchuk right from behind knocked the, the ball out of Durston's stick before he was able to get away. And like you said, we've got 158 remaining here in regulation. And the Six Nations Chiefs holding on to a 10-8 lead is, again, we might as well thank, uh, if we could, we could thank our friends here at Rogers TV uh, and uh, your TV for, for doing this. And it's been a great relationship. I know I say this every broadcast, but it's been a great relationship with uh, your TV, Rogers TV, and uh, Major Series Lacrosse. And on behalf of uh, Major Series Lacrosse, we couldn't uh, be, uh, be thankful enough for the relationship and the broadcasting of these games. Game four of this series, Wednesday night in Baltimore. That's an eight o'clock start. Game five, if necessary, Friday, right back here in Six Nations. The net is empty for Coburg. Peterborough still up in their game against Brooklyn. That's an 11-7 game with 3.36 to go. In this series, a stranglehold could be put on hold if Coburg can get back into this one. The net is empty though. Taking a hit is Logan and going back to the net is Kevin Orleman and the whistle goes a minute 34 left in regulation. Just another example of the parody of major series lacrosse. We got an, uh, ourselves another two goal game here and of course down in Whitby today. Uh, We've got Peterborough and Brooklyn battling it out again. And these, uh, you know what, this has been a fun playoff to be a part of, fun playoff to watch. You watch the games on replay on uh, the Major Series Lacrosse uh, YouTube page or MSL TV on the Major Series Lacrosse website. Uh, you can watch all these games. And you know what, it's been absolutely fun to watch. If you love this, uh, this great game of lacrosse, the YouTube page is a great source for it, so we can uh, so you can watch all the all the action. And for all the fans that are looking forward to the Man Cup coming up in just a few weeks' time, of course the winner of the MSL will play the winner of what, the WLA Langley up in their series one to nothing against Victoria. Game two is happening. 
tonight. It's just getting underway, in fact, on the West Coast. Coquitlam and Nanaimo, the two and three seed over there. Nanaimo leading that series one to nothing. Game two is tomorrow night. Of course, again, the winner of West and East will meet yep. for and the uh, Man Cup. And of course, if you want to watch those WLA games, we'll give them a plug. Uh, not sure if they're watching our broadcast, but you know what? We'll give them a plug. You go to play full screen and uh, all the WLA games are on. And you know what? They've done a great job over there. And it's been fun to watch uh, out of the West Coast as well. It's kind of nice to be get, get home. And if everybody at home is in bed, uh, to throw on a WLA game and watch that. It's not a bad thing to do, especially if you're <laughs> a team trying to scout the competition for the Man Cup. Milligan feeds it up for Curtis. Simmons turns back around. Again, the net is empty. There's an extra man on. Big whack. Wow. And Ty Logan. Goes. And it'll be picked up here by Joey Cupido. He's got an open net. And that is going to be deposited in by Joey Cupido to extend the lead to three. That's why you have an offensive player like Joey Cupido on the floor down to the offensive end, especially in an instance like that when you know the, the uh, net is empty down to the other end. And you get that ball. And it all started down here and just to the right of Dougie Jamison. Ty Logan with a huge whack to get, create the loose ball, and he gets the ball to Joey Capito, and Joey, Joey Capito, probably one of the easier goals that he's had as a Six Nations Chief this summer. Second of the game for Joey Capito to go along with an assist. Again, Eric Fennell with a hat trick. Dalton Silver with two goals. Vaughn Harris with two goals. Cody Jamison and Austin Stotts each with one themselves. And the Six Nations Chiefs are just under 40 seconds away from taking a 3-0 series lead. Simmons misses the pass as it just gets sky-mailed over him, and he couldn't believe that one. As things get settled down for Bell with 20 seconds left here on the clock. The Six Nations Chiefs are on the verge of the MSL final. They're going to be up three games to none with an 11-8 victory as Bell will just hold on to this one and wait for the horn as we are through here at the ILA on this Sunday night. Again, the final from here is Six Nations 11, Coburg 8, game four, and a chance to sweep the series goes Wednesday night in Baltimore. That is an 8 o'clock start. Check your local listings. We'll have it right here on Rogers TV from our affiliates over at your TV. What a game, Daryl. It was a lot of fun to watch and you know what? Another another close one. We had the shots on net 49-41 in favor of the Chiefs. And uh, boy, it's been entertaining lacrosse to say the least. It's a 3 nothing stranglehold for them. Uh, certainly not a 3 nothing uh, series, that's for sure. And I'm pretty sure that game number four in Baltimore is going to be no different. Uh, these two teams have been really slugging it out, but you know what? You feel that momentum shifting uh, in the favor of the Chiefs, and they've, they're, they're, they're really rolling right now. Defensively, they're, they're, they're about as uh, solid as they've been all season. And offense, of course, you, you, you get multiple goal games from guys like Joey Capito, guys like uh, Dalton Solver, the, uh, Austin Stotts the other day. You know what I mean? And they, they, you pick your poison almost, and it's... Uh, uh, it, it's a it's a pretty good recipe that's for sure and I guess we'll see on Wednesday whether they can close this one out and get the brooms out if they do not close things out on Wednesday we will be back here for game five Friday night at eight o'clock but again as you can see there on the screen that is the game of note Wednesday August 10th eight o'clock start that is in Baltimore and the Six Nations Chiefs just needing one more win to get to that major series lacrosse final. We're still on that road to the Man Cup, and that road just keeps getting interesting. For Daryl Smarts, for everybody in the truck, for everybody operating the cameras, and everybody that is able to put us on the air, my name is Mark Perry, saying so long, and maybe I will see you here on Friday, but for sure our friends over at Your TV will see you 
on the screen on Wednesday night for Game 4. Good night, everybody.